Okay, normally I don't really like to talk about specific stocks on this channel. I like to sort of stick to themes. Uh, and I really don't like to talk about specific quarterly, result, quarterly results from a given company. However, the, the Tupperware quarter actually helps illustrate a bunch of ideas that we've been talking about on this channel. So I'm going to make an exception and hopefully viewers can groove some of the ideas that I've been talking about uh, over the year or so that I've been doing these videos. Okay. So uh, first of all, I think everybody knows uh, what, what Tupperware is. It's the company that makes these plastic storage containers. Um, you can scroll down here on the Seeking Alpha website and you can see the description down below. Um, what, what I want to talk about here, what can be interesting about companies like this is unlike traditional retailers or traditional manufacturers of consumer products, uh, these companies that go through a sort of multi-level marketing uh, process tend to, they can have actually pretty interesting cash flow characteristics. And, and why is that? Well, it's because they're offloading a lot of the marketing promotion expense to the actual resellers, to the people that sell it to their friends and family and colleagues and stuff like that, right? So uh, that actually, if these companies are run well, they can actually be very, very cash flow generative. Um, and so that's, that can be kind of interesting, especially if it's a brand that's well known and respected. Um, so for example, like the name Herbalife is kind of an example of how these companies can be run well. And obviously here we've got an example of a company with some uh, under some duress. And then the other thing that's interesting about these companies is when the economy gets into maybe not great circumstances or for now, you know, right now we've got people facing inflation. Well, this is sort of you would think of this as actually an interesting time for people to pick up a side business. And maybe this would be the sort of thing that they might do to make some money on the side. And so there are aspects of these companies that are kind of counter cyclical, which can make them kind of interesting again when things are going well. All right. So that's kind of the backdrop. Now, what I'm going to do is we're just going to go over some of the things that I would do when I see a situation like this and I know kind of what I know about this type of industry and I might take a look and we'll see just the steps that I take as a, just to take a cursory look at this company because I don't own it. Uh, now, obviously, this is not a recommendation for or against this stock. These are just some of the steps I might take on a cursory level to, uh, to look at things. Okay, so first of all, we're going to just take a look at their uh, press release. And we're going to see kind of, I want to see a couple different things. First of all, I want to see uh, what actually is happening and what the change in revenues are. And then also kind of the excuses they make and other things that they do. So a few things struck me. Uh, first of all, we look at the net sales number down 16% year over year. Now in retail, when you have a negative double digit comp, um, that is a disaster. Um, often you have retailers, once they start to show double digit comp, negative comps, they go away or they undergo com sort of significant structural problems. So this is kind of bad. Uh, and then, so what I would want to see here, in fact, in a lot of cases, I would just stop right now and I wouldn't even bother to do any more work. Um, however, what I would, what I would comment here is you want to be thinking about the first derivative. And this is a concept we talked about way back on uh, video number 50. What I want to see here is a, uh, instead of a decrease. Okay. So if, if you wait for this company's revenues to turn positive, what do you think the stock's going to do? Well, it's already, already going to be much higher. So what you want to look for is sort of an incremental step is a decrease in the rate of decrease of year over year comps. So, you know, like with the next quarter, is the uh, are the comps down say 12% or 10% or something like that. So you have a decline in the rate of decline. That's your first derivative uh, to think about. Okay. So to, just to go over that idea, that's video number 50. You can take a look at that uh, and I'll link to it in the description below this video. All right. Uh, now let's keep going and we can see some of the excuses the company uh, makes. And I like to look at this because if there's standard excuses that everybody's using, that's a red flag. That's kind of a bad thing, right? So, and unfortunately, that's what we see. Russia, Ukraine conflict, COVID related lockdowns in China. Okay. And then we have internal challenges. So I don't know how specific they go into it, but this is again, and it's a negative red flag, uh, red flag here. And remember, we talked about red flags. That was two videos ago, video 111, where when you see a red flag, it's like, okay, be careful, tread carefully. Uh, we need to see more information and it's just a bad sign. Okay. And then speaking of red flags, 
we're going to scroll down here and okay also we see that we withdrew they withdrew guidance for the year so now they just don't have great visibility on anything it's another red flag but here is a major red flag which is they swapped CFOs they got rid of their old CFO and appointed a new one and what's a little bit interesting here we don't have much of a mention of the old CFO I actually don't have context for this but um, you know m maybe they already talked about a CFO transition but you'd think they would discuss it again here in the quarterly results um, in fact what I did is I went back to the company's actual website and you can see this is a press release from February of 2019 so they just their old CFO that they had hired they only hired her three years ago and uh, just blew her out so this is a classic red flag it's um, it's one of the issues that I talked about in video 111 of standard red flags to be careful of okay all right now uh, we talked about comps, we talked about different red flags for excuses, we talked about the red flag of swapping out your CFO, uh, the withdrawal of guidance, that's obviously bad. Um, and then what I would do here, and again, normally I would just stop looking right now, is this, this, this company is probably not worth getting involved in just yet, uh, but we did talk about what I'd like to see in the next quarter or in the next couple quarters, right? A slowing of the rate of decline of revenues. But in this case, what I'll do here also is just we're going to take a look at the balance sheet and just see because when you see a stock that's down 30 plus percent on a quarterly miss, that's really bad, right? So kind of what I would initially suspect is this company has balance sheet issues, some sort of problem with their balance sheet. So we're going to scroll down and take a look. And here's here again, we see the net sales down 16% year over year. Um, and then down below we have a balance sheet. Uh, unfortunately, it's sort of a simplified uh, balance sheet. What I would like to do also is see what happened with the components and their current assets. I'd like to see the receivables, how they changed uh, quarter over quarter. And I really would like to see the inventories and how that changed quarter over quarter. My guess is both receivables and inventory are up a lot. And uh, it's a little discouraging that they don't break it out in this uh, statement. And that's a red flag too, right? But you can see uh, we've got $240 million in cash down a little bit. And uh, we're going to just take a look and see what kind of debt situation we have. And we see here, um, whoops, let's see here. Yep, we have long-term debt. 799 million up from 700 million and so you know this is kind of not so good either we've got quite a bit of debt relative to cash on the balance sheet and so the next thing I would do is I want to look and see what kind of cash burn or cash generation this this business has now a lot of times you don't get a cash flow statement with the quarterly results but here they actually did give a cash flow statement it's unaudited but that's normal uh, to, for it to be unaudited. It's not that common sometimes for a company to put out the cash flow statement with the press release. They may only put it out with the 10Q that comes out a little later. So this is nice actually. We get a little sort of an anti-red flag. We get a little more information. But we can see here in the most recent quarter, we, the company burned $41 million in cash and uh, compared to $11 million burn a year ago, this is bad. So we've got increased debt we burned about, let's see, about one-sixth of our cash balance uh, in this past quarter. That's not so good. And we have a pretty decent debt level, and it's growing quarter over quarter. So this is actually not good. The balance sheet is under some duress here, and that's, that's kind of unsettling. And if we scroll down here, we can see uh, borrowings on revolver facility. They drew down their revolver here. I don't know what the total revolver amount was, but... Here's, here's another sign where, okay, this company, they, uh, they need some, some uh, source of cash. And, you know, disturbingly, they bought back stock during the quarter. So, you know, this is kind of not good. Uh, this is, again, a red flag, okay? So, you know, at this point, I'm, I'm basically done. I, I've kind of, <laughs> this is not a company I'm going to take action on. It's not, I'm not going to do anything. I want to see the stock price stabilize. This is really a good example of a falling knife. You never want to catch a falling knife. And uh, just it grooves another concept we've been talking about, which uh, comes from video number 52, which is thanks to Warren Buffett, we have the expression, there's no such thing as a called strike in investing, right? So I don't have to swing at this pitch. 
In fact, I'm definitely not going to swing this pitch. I might put this stock on a, uh, you know, on my screen as a speculative name and just kind of indirectly keep an eye on it, but I'm not going to take action here. And here's the steps that I did to sort of make me decide, okay, this goes in the too hard pile. I'm not going to do anything, but maybe in the future this might be worth taking another look at. But don't try to catch a, fall a falling knife. Uh, keep in mind the different red flags we cited, and there are no called strikes in investing. All right, I hope this video helps, and uh, as always, thanks for watching.